Assalamu alaikum guys. I uh, hope everyone's well. Another long video, I'm so sorry, but a very interesting story, so you'll enjoy it. Um I'm gonna come back to this part about the folding the folding the musalla, like how we always have to and like constantly uh we feel the need to and uh how we you know like if you don't hold the musallah then she down praise or like how we feel like we have to close the Quran and if you don't close the Quran then Quran cheer down is Quran. <laughs> Those stupid things that our parents teach us. Um, but yeah, today I am talking about how did shirk happen? Like, um, just think to yourself, like, the first person in the world is Adam and Islam, and his children were Muslim, he was Muslim, so where did shirk come from, and how did it start happening in the world? And that answer actually came in this book, if you're gonna have this book, it's because of the being, guys, good old Arabia World Days 2011 from me, bro, first year of Adam class. Anyways, it's in Arabic, which means I'm gonna have to translate as I go along the topic, uh, but it's such an interesting thing to listen to. Starting now. <laughs> so, uh, it's starting from the, the time of after, uh, after Adam and Salam and Shaitan's like in the, in the world and he's starting to wonder how am I going to make people commit shirk for uh, Ashkar partners to Allah SWT. Uh, and Shaitan says, as the book it says to, uh, Shaitan, uh, he knows that Allah forgives, does not forgive shirk, but he forgives everything else if he wishes, if he so wishes. And Shaitan thought to himself, that how am I going to make people uh, ascribe partners to Allah SWT so that they will never enter Jannah? That was his goal. And he's like, how am I going to get there? And he starts thinking to himself. And he thinks to himself that if I go and tell people, worship idols, don't worship Allah, these people will swear at me and they'll, and they'll beat me up. And they'll, and they'll say that we seek refuge from Allah SWT. And why would we ascribe partners with Allah SWT? And why would we worship idols? That's what they'll say to him. That's what, And he knows that. And, was, and so he starts to think, like, how will I get them to start ascribing partners? So Shaitan, he found a path. He found a path because he started to he started to think and realize that these people they love their pious predecessors they love pious people they realize that um, one sec ah, continuing so pious people who are like always in the fear, fear of Allah always doing zikr always praying always always seeking from Allah Subhanahu wa uh, these pious people he realized that they're very pious and he realized that people love very very pious people and so. Uh, he um, thought to himself that uh, he thought to himself that uh, I'll go to them uh, after this pious, these pious people, some of these pious people pass away. And so that's what he did. He went to the people and he started to ask them, how is this person? How is that person? How is this person amongst you? And they said that, subhanAllah, that person was a, a, a person of Allah. He was a friend of Allah. And when that person used to make dua, Allah would accept his dua. When a person was to ask for something, Allah would give it to him. And they would pray. They, when Shaitan was asking them, he was just trying to like encourage them and uh, to to get to the next stage of his plan. And then Shaitan says, uh, "How do you feel? How is your grief?" And they said, "Our grief is very, very deep." And he said that, uh, "How do you? How much do you love them?" And say, "We those pious preachers says that passed away now. We love them. They're like we love them very much." And he says to them, and then, and then, "Would you not like to see them every single day? Like to see them every single day?" And they're like, "How the heck is that possible when they have already died?" So he says, he said, tell them that make a picture of them and that way you'll see them every single day. And people were like, wow, that's a great idea. We've never thought of that. And so they started to make a picture of that pious person so that they could remember them and that they could, you know, just have them in their mind that they can be a means of uh, encouragement and reminder of, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I said, this is a terrific idea. Uh, and so that's what they tried to do. They tried to look at that frame picture every single day. And also, this is one of the reasons. This is a, a, one of the arguments for why pictures are not allowed in Islam. Uh, okay, so then it continues. It goes, uh, the next chapter says, from uh, picture frames or picture or drawings to statues. Uh, so these pictures, people started to think, why not make them into a statue? Because it's a physical form and it feels nicer. So they started to, to they change the pictures into statues, and now we got statues. But we don't have idols yet because these people know that this is a pious predecessor. He's not God, and it's like, so yeah, they know that it's a pious predecessor, and they're still not doing shirk. They're still worshiping Allah, and they st they know that this is a rock. This not this rock is not gonna give them any benefit, not give, nor give them any harm, nor give them any sustenance, and they, and they're only. Do it and as a means of gaining barakah, like blessings from them. And they, they respect this this statue because they're like, it's of the Baha Pi's predecessor. Uh, and and then, like, the, and this continues. They start making many, many idols and of Pi's predecessors and 
more Pita says, more pious people come and they make statues of them when they pass, and it continues, the, the process continues. One sec. And, and so, uh, these parents uh, who are respecting these idols, their children saw that their parents respect their idols, and their children, which is kind of, which is, their children would see their parents, uh, like, uh, respect it, and, like, clothe it, and um, kiss it, and make, make, do, make dua near it. And the children started to uh, feel like they have to respect it too, which is which is actually me <laughs> returning to the point about us folding a musallah and like us having to hold the Quran because we say shaitan will pray or, or read Quran. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We were taught so much and children to us so much that we have to do that action even though it has no part in Islam that you have to fold a musallah. And this is the same thing that happened to the kids of these of these parents. They saw their parents. Uh, doing good actions, uh, making dua near these idols and uh, um, yeah, statues are statues, uh, and then they started. Then the children went a step forward, and they started to instead of the parents, they saw their parents bowing to it out of respect. This is another reason why bowing is not Islam, Islamically allowed. And this, the children went another step forward, and they started to prostrate to it, and started to think that this is our God, and this is who we ask for 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 in our needs. And it became that they started to worship these idols because they didn't know that pious predecessor years and years, like, like centuries and decades ago. They don't know them anymore. That that time and that knowledge is past. It's gone. You Carrying a knowledge from one century to another century without having it written down in, in a book amongst people, especially back in that day, like there was no paper and pen, okay? This is like really early on in the world. Um, it was like, uh, yeah, it was un unthought of. And so, they started worshiping them, and that's how idol worship came into existence. Like, I, by the way, I'm not trying to um, uh, talk down to any other religion. This is just Islamic perspective for Muslim audience. And yeah, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala became very angered at them, uh, and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sends uh, starts sending prophets. But this is also like uh, in Islamic perspective why there's so many religions out in the world. Because shaitan finds a loophole, finds, finds a path, finds a door that he can open and cause people to go astray from from uh, worshipping one, one Allah. And uh, when I read the story, I was just so blown away. Like, it made so much sense to me. And I wondered for so long, like, if everyone's Muslim, now how the heck do we get, uh, you know, shit happening? Uh, and by the way, like, even when um, Isa alayhi salam will come and all the rest of that will happen, like, there will be a Islam will prosper, but in the same way, uh, before the end of time, um, kufr will all come back and rising, and it's it's like this, you know, it's this is how it happens. So I hope that was beneficial for you guys. Uh, it was really eye opening for me just to know how things happen. There's no lesson to learn; it's just a knowledge that is very interesting. Okay, cool. That's all I got.